Good morning students. We are going to start a new chapter that is sentences today. You have already done a worksheet on the basis of this chapter, right? Now when you see the chapter name sentences in front of you, the first question which may have arrived in your brain is what is a sentence, right? Now before dealing with the definition, we should know what are the important elements to frame a sentence without which a sentence formation is not possible so let's move into the next slide to see this okay to understand these elements let's have an example i have given you a sentence billy took the folder now who took the folder here who is doing the work of taking the folder the answer is billy so whoever does the work in a sentence becomes the subject so who is the subject here billy because he is doing the work of taking the fold you can clearly see the verb in the sentence the verb is took okay now along with the verb whatever the work the subject has done becomes the object so if i ask a question billy took what what work billy has done billy took the folder so along with the verb the folder the work done becomes the object so remember to frame a sentence it is very necessary to have a subject and a verb and now you know what is a subject and what is a verb let's move to our next slide to have a complete definition of the sentence now let's try to define the sentence okay what is a sentence a group of word kind of but a group of word which gives you complete thought or idea let us have an example the example is blue sky is the is it making any sense it is a group of word but it is not making any sense now let's rearrange these group of words when we rearrange it becomes the sky is blue is it making any sense now yes it is giving you an idea that the color of the sky is blue let's move to the next component in framing of the definition of the sentence the next component we have already dealt with it in the previous slide that is subject and the verb combination without the subject and a verb combination of sentence formation is impossible but some exceptions are there for example if i give you this put the book there can you find the verb in the sentence yes can you see the work done yes somebody is putting the book there but where is the subject in this kind of sentences the subject is automatically understood that is there is a subject you in it okay now let's move to the next component of the sentence that is meaning does each and every sentence mean the same no it does not why because it differ with the type of the sentences for example if a sentence is a statement if it is a question or if it is a command and exclamation every sentence meaning will differ with the type of sentence now let's move to the type of sentence and deal with every type separately we will learn now the different types of sentences okay the types of sentences there are four types of sentences they are declarative sentences interrogative sentences imperative sentences and exclamatory sentences we will deal with all these sentences one by one so let's move and learn them Let's now deal with the declarative, also known as assertive sentences. Now let's see the definition of declarative sentence. 
what is a declarative sentence right a declarative sentence is a statement that tells us something it ends with a full stop let's have some examples also for example i went to the shop today my name is joseph both are the statements that is telling you something and ending with a full stop let's move to the next type of the sentence deal with the next type of sentence that is an interrogative sentence now interrogative sentences helps you ask question it ends with a question mark not with a full stop and you people are familiar with this mark right now let's have some example for example where do you live question mark what time did you go to the bed question mark and question mark is very essential to be put in a interrogative sentences when you are dealing with your test papers it holds equal importance okay let's move to the next uh, type of the sentence now we have understood the two different types of sentences that is declarative or assertive or interrogative sentences now let's move to imperative sentences what are imperative sentences let's see the definition imperative sentences tell someone to do something it can be a command or request okay the next point says it ends with a full stop but we have already seen this in which sentence declarative sentence yes over there also it was ending with a full stop but the difference is that it was a statement here it can be a command a request or a suggestion for example let's see some examples also please complete your homework tomorrow full stop we are using the request for that is please next one go to the school now there is no request for no suggestion here it is a command that is go to the school now okay so these kind of sentences are known as imperative sentences let's move to the last one that is exclamatory sentences okay here we are with the next type of sentence that is exclamatory sentence and it is also one of my favorite type of sentences why let's see the definition sentence that shows strong feeling so it is a sentence with the help of which we can show strong feeling it ends with an exclamatory mark for example i feel so sad okay today is the best day ever i feel so sad tells you a deep feeling right that somebody is feeling very sad today today is the best day ever somebody is very happy so it shows strong feelings of a person and that's why it is my favorite kind of sentence okay let's move to the next slide in which we will learn how to frame exclamatory sentences why because in class 7 you will be receiving exercises based on these kind of sentences and the question will be framed to convert different kind of sentences into exclamatory sentence so you should know how to frame a exclamatory sentence let's move to the next slide to learn how to frame before moving to understand how to uh, frame an exclamatory sentence we should know some basics right let's revise these basics i have provided you with a sentence the cat is tired what is the noun here the cat it's easy how is the cat the cat is tired so what is tired here adjective why because it is qualifying a noun clear what is an adjective 
let's now move to the next one that is i walk quickly what is walk here verb okay now what is quickly then the quickly is an adverb why because it is qualifying the verb so you are quite clear now what is an adjective and what is an adverb it was just a little revision about adjective and adverb before moving into the framing of an exclamatory sentence let's move to the next slide to learn the framing of the now let's learn exclamatory sentences that is how to frame them exclamatory sentences can be framed with the help of what and the formula we can use is what along with an a or an depending on the adjective whether it is a starting with a consonant or a vowel plus noun plus subject which have we have already done in the previous slide what is a subject plus helping verb slash verb okay plus others and exclamation mark now you must be thinking what is a helping verb ma'am so helping verb here is you are very familiar with it you have seen them these are called helping verb is am are was were has have had do does did so these are helping verb right now let's have a sentence she is a lovely girl now we have to convert it into a exclamatory sentence now what is the noun here girl okay what is lovely here it is defining the noun so it is an adjective now we will place it in the formula let's place it what a next lovely why a because l is a consonant so what a lovely adjective girl is a noun what is the subject here she is a lovely girl who is a lovely girl she so she is a subject and what is the helping verb here is so we are putting the helping verb at the end is and we are putting exclamatory mark so this is how we frame exclamatory sentence with what now let's move to the next one that is with how if we have to frame an exclamatory sentence with how how to frame it here is the formula how plus adjective or adverb you can use both plus subject plus helping verb i told you what is helping verb then verb plus others and exclamation mark let's have a sentence or example he speaks very quickly so let's put it in the formula how what is the adjective and adverb here or an adverb here speaks what is it verb and quickly is qualifying the verb what is it then it is an adverb so how quickly we are putting adverb after how and what is the subject here he speaks very quickly who speaks very quickly he speaks very quickly so he is the answer we are getting and he is performing the task so he is the subject here he and speaks is the verb there is no helping verb here so what is the verb here speaks plus the exclamatory mark which is very important let's move to the next slide to understand how to frame exclamatory mark now let's learn here now we will learn how to frame with the help of so and such so plus adjective it's very simple now you are so sweet right and put an exclamation mark how to frame it with the help of such such plus a or an depending on the vowel or consonant of the adjective plus singular countable noun so let's frame it she is such a lovely girl and exclamation mark so such a and then there is an adjective lovely then girl and exclamation mark now we are done with the framing of the exclamatory sentences i hope you will be able to frame them when you receive some questions right now there is one more thing in your first chapter that you have to learn that is question tags and we will deal with it right now okay 
So it's not a difficult part. Let's move to question tags. Okay. Here we are with the question tags and these are very simple to understand. A question tag is a small question which is asked at the end of a sentence for a confirmation. Okay. So here we are. On the screen you can see sentence plus a question tag. Yes. A question tag will have a sentence and these sentences can be of different types like affirmative, interrogative, negative, positive but the question tag will always be in the form of question and it is only a small question which is asked at the end of sentence or just to have a confirmation okay now let's move to understand how to frame question tags okay let us deal with the question tag let us deal with the question tag in more detail. On your screen, you can clearly see it is written sentence plus question tag, right? Sentences can be framed with the help of tenses, helping verb or model verb, right? You must be thinking what are the model verbs, right? The model verbs, you are very familiar with them. They are can, could, may, might, shall, should and many more are there, right? And is there anything else with the use of which we can frame the sentences other than these three? No. So these three are will help you in framing the sentences. The next half that is the question tag will remain in the question form. So there will be no change. Let's see. If the sentences are framed with the help of tense, helping verb and model verb, how will the question tag be formed? Let's the same the same thing that is sentence plus question tag and the sentences are made with the rule of tenses or helping verb or model verb. Now, if the sentence is made with the tense, the question tag will follow the rule of tense. For example, if I ask you a uh, question, do you like reading? The question tag will also have the tense form that is do. Okay? That is do. If it is made with the help of R, so the question tag will also have R in it. For example, are you a doctor? So it will have an R in a question tag. And if it is in the form of model verb, like can you speak English? The question tag will also have can in it. Now, now, with the help of an exercise, let's learn how to frame a question tag. Okay? Now, see, first example is, you are from India. You are from India is in the positive form. So, the question tag will be in the negative form. Yes, it is an important part to remember. Now, you are from India. What is it made up of? Helping verb. You can see are. So, what will be the question tag? The question tag will be negative and in the short form that is aren't you? We are putting you after aren't. That is the pronoun. We will put pronoun after the question tag. Okay. Right. It's clear now. And for the uh, you, the pronoun is the same. You. Next one. You like pizza. So, you like. It is in the form of present indefinite tense. Or simple present tense and what kind of sentence it is having a positive sentence so we will make it into a negative question tag what will be the answer I told you in the previous slide 
when we use tense we use do so what will be the answer don't you okay next you smell lovely now again here it is in the form of present indefinite tense so and also it is a positive sentence so we will frame the question tag don't you negative form let's move to the next slide to deal with the negative kind of sentence and now with the help of Here we are going to deal with the negative kind of sentences. First sentence is you aren't from India. It is a negative sentence made with the help of a helping verb. The question tag will be positive like are you? Yes, right. Next sentence is we shouldn't drink Pepsi. It is a negative sentence again made with the help of model verb. So what will be the question tag? Should we which will be in the positive form. So we are done with the chapter. I hope you all are clear. Thank you so much. We will meet in the next class again.